Welcome to the dawn, the psalmist timeline. We go through the dumbest timeline. Is this truly the dumbest timeline? Welcome back to another edition of the Dumbest Timeline Series 2 AI. This week we have a fantastic conversation with one of my favorite producers, Slack of the Beat Child. He was nice enough to take some time to talk to me about AI, AI and music. Funny enough, this is a first of a two-parter. We originally started having such a great conversation about AI in general, it was nice to find out that Slacka is similarly just as interested in it as I am, that we didn't even get to the music conversation until 20 something minutes in. So this is the first part. This first part is just us talking about AI in general. And then the second part next week will be a conversation about AI as it relates to music. So jump on in now. Enjoy the show. We'll be back with more. Hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome to another edition. You probably already heard the intro, but this is the intro intro to talking with Slack of the Beat Child. I am pretty excited about this because I've been listening to Slack of the Beat Child for years, uh, something forever. Uh, probably one of the... I, I've, I've played that track in so at so many places, so many spaces, uh, over and over, listen to it at nauseum to a point where people are probably just like, we get it. You love the track. We understand. <laughs> uh, but it. it's kind of a crazy moment to be able to talk to someone whose music you love and connect with. And uh, so Slacka, thank you so much for taking the time. This is really fun for me. Wow. Well, I appreciate the support. Like truly I do. And, uh, it's, a, you know, it's a pleasure to speak speak with you i love look forward to chopping it up yeah so uh i mean i gave you a little bit of background before we started but uh it's for every and everyone who's listening to this already knows i talk i'm talking about ai in this mm. limited run series of the dumbest timeline part two or series two however you want to approach it uh and we're talking about ai so i thought i would talk to we've already interviewed someone who is studying in school to make music right now that was samara last week and then I want to talk to someone who's been making music for a, for a moment, for like a good number of years. Over 20. Yeah. Yeah, man. So what was <laughs> your first impression of AI in general when you yes. heard about it? Okay. So I remember the day that I was introduced to generative AI. Okay. Um, it was Chad GPT. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had been seeing things online here and there. This is, I think, 2022. Right. It wasn't, even, it wasn't even that long ago. No. So it's like crazy no. to think yeah. where it's come in that small period of time. But so it was ChatGPT, and I went on to this thing, and I started just challenging it. Right. First, like first or second version of ChatGPT. And the way I was getting these responses, my, I, the last time I had had that like mind blow experience is when I discovered the internet or when it was right. presented to us in elementary school. Right. 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 Like, I, so I would say we're about the same age. I'm in my early forties for the, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. we're early definitely 40s. the same age. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so I, I think I was in grade uh, four. Right. When our teacher said, guys, come in, we're going to show you this thing called the internet. Right. And I like, I was like, what is the internet? And so he sat us down in front of the screen, black screen. Right. And it was like, like DOS style. Oh, wow. and was, right. Right. And he's yeah. like, I'm going to send a message to somebody in Los Angeles. So he typed a message, hit enter. It took like 30 seconds for the message yeah. to send. And then we were just sitting there waiting. And like 10 minutes later, he gets a message back. Oh, and we were like, mind blown. Yeah. The that shot. he was talking. It was like, wow, you can send somebody words on a computer and they can send a message back and like what yeah my mind was blown and we, we at that point you don't even realize the potential of, of the internet it, you know yeah and and um my second mind blow with the original internet was when i received an mp3 right sound because right. you know it was it was cassette tapes right and then maybe it, cds were it was coming around as well right but cass cassette tapes is all we knew so to be able to go on a computer and get a song and hear it, like 
that was a mind blow. Yeah, yeah. 100%. Right. So 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 fast forward, you know, the internet's doing all these crazy things now. We don't even think about it. Um we're so we're so we used to internet. it now. We're so used to it, yeah. but it's it's like such an integral part of our lives. Right. You know, the fact that we're we're doing this right now. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, over the yeah. internet. You're you're yeah, not in Montreal, you know, like yeah. Totally. And we're doing it in the browser. We're not even doing it in like a program we downloaded right. or anything like that, right? So right. It's just a regular part of life. And so the most recent time I had this similar mind blow feeling is with ChatGPT. Yeah. Because uh, never have I experienced an, a technology like this. Yeah. And, uh, Wait, and by the I way, was, November 30th, 2022 was when it launched the first one is for what I'm seeing. Got so it, so got not it. even like, not even when we say 2022, we're not talking the beginning of the year. We're talking, yeah. end, this isn't even two years ago then, because it's not like, that's crazy when you think about it. it. It's very crazy. And I think that we're going to very soon have a hard time comprehending the technological, the speed yeah. Of, yeah. of advancement. Because even us right now, like it was, what was it 2021? No, it could have been, it was 2022. Right. And then you're telling me it was the end of the year. Yeah. And the progress is, is crazy. Yeah. But, but going back to my discovery of it, um, it was chat GPT and it, it blew my mind. It made me so, I love tech. Hmm. And so I was just so excited. I was using it for everything. And, and, you know, I have a pro subscription to GPT and cloud, you know? Oh, so wow. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm really, it, it's scared. It terrifies me and excites me at the same time. Like, well, even, and I'm, I'm so happy you said that because that's exactly my thing. I am. So at my work, I'm one of the people on the team and even on my other podcast, Geek Sipe, and people are always saying like, yo, Brian, like, Brian, you're a little obsessive. Like you, you, I'm mm. like, but it, it, the, the fact that it does intimidate me is the reason I want to learn about it more because I feel like if I, one, if I don't, I'll be left behind because yeah. there are younger people, the same way you talked about the internet when we were in elementary school and we were introduced to it the first time. Anyone who said, I'm not messing with that internet thing is was left behind. Because Absolutely. here we are in 2024 and the internet is what you use every single day of your life, whether it's social media, whether it's your banking, whether all the things that we do in life, things have changed and the internet is yes. a major part of our lives. So yes. And and we, we always joke about you and I are the same age. One of the things that people joke about for our generation is we were the last generation who got to play outside, but then also mm -hmm. live through that intense internet and computer boom the way it right. is. Right. Because even Gen X a mixture of both. Yeah. Because mm. even Gen X was slightly older by the time the internet comes out. So they weren't really kids playing, but we were still in elementary school. We were yeah, literally children. Yeah. So we played outside, but also had computers that could do all yes. that stuff. And that kind of feeling that I when I look at it now, I'm like, that's gonna be the next generation when it comes to AI stuff. AI, yes, yeah. absolutely. I look at my kids and how they view AI and to them it's just like this normal thing, you know? Um, it's just integrate because their their brains are a lot more life is all brand new. Right. Right. This is gonna be such a normal part of their everyday life. Every day. And if we and if you and I, if we don't pay attention, then we're gonna be like you said going to be left behind because it advances and changes so quickly exponential speed like just Ex -ex exponential yeah what's it called there's a there's a uh oh that curve there's uh, a the curve the um Kurzweil something hold on technological technology i like that we're both <laughs> case in point we're both such nerds that we're like let's look up this term online uh i should just ask GPT. The Gar <laughs> oh yeah, true. You know what? Yes, please do ask ChatGPT. Let's take that yeah. moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Let's use the tools we are supposed to use now, right? My friends are going to be so mad when they listen to this episode because they know <laughs> how much I love using ChatGPT or like G Gemini and all of them, and they're going to be like, "Well, you found someone else who agrees with you. That's not really fair." I'm like, "Well, guys, you know, he's a great music producer, and he also finds this stuff interesting. What am I supposed to do?" <laughs> right. Yeah. Moore's law. That's it. Moore's law. Okay, perfect. Right. So another related to Moore's law, which specifically refers to the observation that the number of transistors on a microchip doubles 
approximately every two years, Jesus leading Christ. to a corresponding increase in computing powder. Yeah. This concept also contributes to the idea of accelerating, of course, technological progress. It's, it's That's an exponential thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that um, Moore's law yeah. is such a, we, we're seeing it in action. We're seeing it unfold in front of our eyes. Right. And not the thing is, you know, looking back at a couple of years, and how much it's made progress. We're only at the beginning of the curve. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the thing that blows my mind when I think about it, because this is so early in the curve for AI. And, mm -hmm. and, and of course, there's going to be that thing that you and I are going to find out years from now, where the similarly with the internet, oh, the military was already using it for this much time. Mm -hmm. And I don't doubt for a second when it comes mm -hmm. to AI, because I think even just today I saw, and obviously these episodes are being, I'm, I'm banking these. So you're hearing this now, probably September, maybe, but this, we're recording this now in August. And at, uh, I just saw in the news, the head of chat GPT mentioned that the military will see and let me try and look up that article the military okay. will see G gpt5 before the public oh i believe that of course and my whole thing is like um open ai you know when i first heard about that company it was like a non-for-profit so confused right yeah right and yeah. so i'm like okay but uh, yeah, how does that work? Uh, how does that even work? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How does that even work? Right. Yeah. But not for profit because they, well, they're not open source. Right. No. So they're not open source. From what I understand, Meta has an open source one called Lama. Uh, Lam, yeah. Lam, Cause I saw that the, um, I don't know if you've seen that new tech that's going to be coming out. The guy who's who, Schifferman, I think he calls it friend. It's friend.com. It's like a big story right now where you can press this little like Tamagotchi type mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And and he said he built his off of using Meta's open source AI. Got it. That's, yeah. that's very interesting. So I just made a comment on something about mm -hmm. friend actually, just like literally before we yeah, well, yeah, I'm hopped sure. on the call. I love new tech. I, I absolutely right. love I, it. Exactly. But, yeah, yeah. But I have my problem with this product Ooh, is it forces you to, op to look at your phone. Right. You talk to it and it replies through your and phone every time. Through your phone. I think that's the, the biggest flaw in yeah. the design yeah. because uh, I personally believe that society is going to move towards, you know how we're moving towards like green, eco-friendly right. because of the environment. Right. I think there's going to be a movement of tech, social social um, etiquette in tech okay. where where looking at your phone or bringing your phone to certain social things is going to be like gauche taboo. Yeah. yeah. Like, well, exactly. yeah, yes. like the next generation, right. There's going to be, and that's going to be the kind of tech eco societal norm of a next generation. You know, like, Oh yeah. My parents, they were always on their phone. They never paid attention. Oh, to me. that's such like, a good point. Right? That's yeah. That's such so, a good so point. When I see ads like that, I'm like, Oh, they don't, they're, they're not in touch with mm. the progression of old technology and how it's going to be like, because no one, no one really likes that, you know, like yeah. when you're with your partner and you're both on your phone, it doesn't feel right. I know. You know I feel so bad. I do that. <laughs> I do that to my partner all the time. She'll be talking to me and I'll be looking at my phone and I'll realize I'm looking at my phone and I'll feel guilty for doing it. Guilty. And I'm but like, you still do it. I'm still. Uh, yeah. And I still just. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So I, I right. yeah, and I, I've been seeing a lot of futurists talk about the fact that we're going to be moving away from handheld tech and yes. moving more towards. And I'm I'm hoping that this friend.com tech will turn into an earpiece, a small yeah. earpiece. I imagine where you talk and and it translates the text, right? Which you know next, but for ninety nine because I think the price is ninety nine USD for to pre order the, to pre order i'm like i'm sure he's yeah. keeping costs low for now i also am a little worried about this being a scam if i'm being honest because when i saw mm, like, when i saw yeah. <laughs> i was like you're gonna give me a tamagotchi that talks to my phone and how do i know how secure this is where who's right who's keeping track of the database and all the information that it's storing if you get enough people on this service how are you gonna manage all of that 
the bandwidth needed for constant communication that people are going to be doing. Right. Like there's so many factors that I'm just like, where, how does this work? You know? Yeah. I think, you know, a lot of these startups, Silicon Valley has become kind of this toxic place that mm. no one really talks about. I think, I think, um, I'm trying to think of a, a comparison in industries that were, where there was like a boom and they kind of take advantage of a population who don't know how to code and don't really understand tech. Right. Or you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you know how to do that, it's easy to yeah. sell to a bunch of people who don't really understand. And yeah. my thing is, I agree with you in, in that, um, like the risks and also the upselling to features that might not actually be legit. Like at one right. point in the ad, she spills her um, falafel sauce on the thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she says, um, sorry, I got you messy. And then it replies, yum. Like, how would it, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, how would it know? Like, how, how did it know she it was, was referring to yeah. the sauce that fell onto the thing, right? Yeah. Like, what sensors does it have that it can tell that this was food? Like, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why are we playing? But that's, yes. Why are we playing? Yeah, that, that that's such a good point because you're selling us the idea that this thing is going to be so intelligent. Right. That when I spill sauce from food, it will know that I've spilled food on you. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So as I, so yeah, I think there's a lot of like uh, snake oil in, yeah. in the tech world. Yeah, there's concern. <laughs> and 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 if anything, I think that leads back to the main point we're talking about where AI is so advanced, or not so advanced, but the curve is advancing so quickly that if you don't pay attention to these things, someone who has always been interested in the idea of AI or wearable tech because they grew up watching Star Trek and all this other science fiction now gets mm -hmm. this pitch of, oh, you're going to have a wearable tech that you just tap and you can talk to, or it's always listening. And here you are, mm. it's finally here. And because you've been excited for this, you are willing to put the money down because it's also so cheap. 99 yeah. USD for, a, for yeah. a friend that talks to me all the time. This is Star Trek. This is all I ever wanted. Right. But then you have to start to question, how are you building it? What is it being built with? Where are the security features? And those Who's are things. Who's building it? Who's, Who's building actually it? building it? Yes. 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 Because like when you think of it, like not to get all conspiracy or whatnot, but like in this world of like warfare too, mm -hmm. like that's like the perfect, that's the perfect front for a foreign whatever to be like, everybody's talking to this thing and it's collecting data. And all the time. I don't know. And, 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 and no, but again, these are all things that we should be aware of. When people are worried about TikTok and how TikTok has to divest from their their Chinese partners because people are concerned about security. But once again, you, like you're saying, you're and you're pointing out something we all should think about. Not that I'm concerned about it, but just think about it. Who's building the tech? Where yeah. where where's the work being done? And in in that place that's doing it, is there an advantage for them to build a backdoor? Is there an advantage for them to build the tech that they can collect information from? Who are the partners? These are all things that the only the business is going to know. Right. And the other thing is it's not regulated at all. Right. I mean in in your in Europe, they have the European Union which is a lot more on top. Yes. of tech. Yeah. Which is, is is crazy how how on top of it they are yeah. to the point where big companies like Apple and Google can't release certain features. Yeah, because I don't know if you know this, but uh, Apple products are all switching to USB C because the European right. Union forced everyone to fall in line, and now that's right. probably going to be an international decision for Apple because it's like, why would we do it two different ways? Yeah, Costs. so and 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 those are decisions that I find interesting because those are decisions that I feel benefit us as users so that we like when my coworker says do you have a a, a plug i we all have the same plug now for once yeah which <laughs> yeah. is like it's like electricity though like honestly yeah. imagine going to like someone's house with your like boom box or whatever if you right. buy an appliance and you're like oh my goodness the appliance doesn't plug into the electrical yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know like yeah that's crazy like, that's such a crazy tech, it, yeah it's like electricity and tech are becoming there are things that are just such commonplace that yeah. it needs to be universally connected to our lives. And, and accessible. And accessible, yeah. you know? Like I think of um, the International Space Station. Mm. When different countries send up vehicles, like they all have the same mechanisms oh, interesting. for certain things, right? Different yeah. countries, because like it's such a critical um, operation yeah. that there needs to be standards 
in operation, right? Yeah. But but going back to AI and how it's not regulated right. in North America, right? It's like we're in the Wild West. And, and what it kind of reminds me of, I don't know if you've ever seen them, Popular Mechanics magazines from like the 70s. Oh, of course, yeah. And they had right? the show back in the day too, yeah. At the back of the, the Popular Mechanics or Popular Science, it's like a catalog of things you can buy. Oh, cool. It was like, but the products, it was like, it was wild the things they were trying to sell on the back of it because they weren't legit things. Oh. But, <laughs> you know, it'd be yeah, like yeah. rocket, rocket kit, build your own rocket kit, you know, for yeah. like two, not two dollars and 99 cents. And you're like, mm. uh, yeah, yeah, like, parents. You know, build your own, yeah, your own <laughs> yeah. satellite system, you know, five ninety nine. <laughs> I'm just like, what? yeah. No, I find I find that stuff interesting because I do think regulations is one of the things that we are taking almost the most for granted with this situation. Uh, mm -hmm. There's an assumption that the people who are building the tech, and that leads me into my next question: the people who are building the tech are doing so with good intentions. Hmm. Especially when you hear something is not for profit initially, you're just like, oh well, they're not looking to make money; they're looking to do this for the betterment of humankind. And then you have to start to wonder, you and you, sh and again, p pay attention. Is mm -hmm. is that the direction? That's the end of the first part of our conversation with Slack of the Beach Child. Once again, we want to thank him so much for jumping on and speaking with me about AI. Uh, you know, as I mentioned at the top of the show, this is just the first of a two-parter. This conversation specifically was about AI. We get into more about AI and music in the second part. He also has some really great ideas that I don't want to spoil. So I'll let you hear them in the second one. We'll be back with another one soon. Peace, everybody. The Dumbest Timeline, Series 2, AI, hosted by Brian Holiday. Produced by Brian Holiday for Brian Holiday Productions. Co-produced in partnership with Free X Agents Media. Theme song by Jasper Q. Jones. Mixing by Brian Holiday. Enjoyed the show? Follow this show on Spotify or review it on Apple Podcasts. Lastly, subscribe to The Dumbest Timeline on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening.